Did you just buy a new horse? Hi, I'm Disa, or full name Herdis Reynestotter. I've been a professional within the Icelandic horse world for 20 years, and we're about to follow the first week of getting to know a new horse. If you like this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any other videos or links that I might send in the future. In this first video, we're going to see basic leading, basic groundwork, and then we'll follow up with three more videos, seeing how the horse develops. We'll be covering topics like the top line, the bending, taking control of the shoulders, but also analyzing what the horse has already known, how his training status is, how his character is, and then talking a little bit about safety, as well as the light seat, light cues, etc. Enjoy. We just brought over these two here directly from Iceland. Uh, they were four horses coming together with a direct flight from Iceland to Dublin for the very first time. And I just thought that I would uh, kind of record a little bit of what you do when you get horses that you don't really know. When you're buying a horse, when you're getting a horse that you don't really know much about. Like what can you do first? I do know that these horses are both trained, a bit anyway. Um, I'm not quite sure how much, especially with this one. He is not that young, but he has been several years out just in the field doing nothing but being a horse. And, uh, and this girl here, she is a six year old. So simply from her age as well, maybe not that much advanced, especially as she is pregnant as well and hasn't been on the saddle now for quite a long while. So yeah, those are Kalsi, the gelding and Agnes, the mare. And first, I have already put a halter on, I've led them around, I know that that's all fine. So I'm going to work a little bit with the bridle today and just maybe see how they respond to different cues. So this is very simple, just a single broken bit. I have a little strap, chin strap underneath it because I don't use no spend necessarily, especially at this stage when I'm not really doing much in a sense and I feel actually quite nice sometimes not to use any no spend anyway. Um, Kalsi here is clearly used to the bit, there is no question about that. I saw him actually as a five-year-old, so I do know that he was already written then. And I know that he has been written uh, a tiny bit since then probably as well, but he's not very advanced, I know that much. So I have this, just a single e easy going bridle here. And I'm just gonna make sure that he's okay with me coming close to him, patting him a bit making sure that he is plus, he is okay with normal kind of human interactions. Brushing a little bit, of course. We were already doing a bit of that before as well yesterday. There we go. And uh, he seems to be quite calm and easy going with that. I decide to keep Agnes in here as well, because when they travel together, they usually become friends rather quickly. And I thought, when they are used to being together, even if it has only been a couple of days that they're really, or a few days that they've known each other, they, because they've gone through something that is a little bit scary, maybe, as a travel can be, they instantly become friends. And when they're friends, they also feel more secure in each other's company. So I'll just allow Agnes to be roaming around here while I work a little bit with Kelsey. So I'm bringing a whip here because I find also that it is handier to have something in my hand to just lengthen my my cues, lengthen my arm basically. And first I'm just gonna lead him behind me and see that he leads and make sure also that he stops when I want to stop. So I use a bit of a, of a body language to do that. I go forward and I ask him to follow me. I have to pull a little bit there as you can see. And then he comes. When I stop, my body language goes a little bit back and I say, ho. Oh. And it took him a little while to stop there. Lexi, get out. Get out. Dog interacting. And again, ho, oh, there. So this wasn't very quick reaction. And that also kind of tells me that he is probably not the one to, to do quick reactions for most things. He seems to be quite laid back and easy going, which is fine. And then I'm going to lead him at my side. Then I cross the reins in my hand, in my palm, and stand by his shoulder. So I don't want to actually be pulling him forward. I just stand by, my, by his shoulder, use the voice signal and also body language, lean a little bit forward. If nothing happens, I touch him gently here with the whip. And there he goes. So now he's 
walking beside me and I try to be careful that I'm not pulling him. He should, however, also not be pushing in towards me. So I can use the whip here a little bit in front to mark my path, my pace. It's also about teaching them that I know where my space is, that I insist on having a bit of a private space there. But I also want him to accept me being at his shoulders. Gets a little bit slow here, so I have to use the whip a little bit there. Make sure that I'm not pulling him again. There we go. And again, use the voice and ho. And a little bit maybe with the whip there or with the reins as well as a stop. Forward again. There we go. And ho. So that was easier. He stopped better there. Now he turns himself a little bit away. I'm just going to use the chance then to turn him around altogether. We need to do this on both sides. I don't want to be between a horse and a fence, so I turn to the other direction here. There we go. Seems to have understood the task. Goes easily beside me here. Again, gets a little slower, maybe because there's another horse standing at the gate. Lead him a little bit here into the middle. There we go. That's it. Drifting a tiny bit away in towards the other horse. All normal. And again, ho. Oh, there. And again, he turns his, ha his haunches, his hind, a little bit away from here and pushes a bit there. Tells me that probably this side is his side that he protects a bit. He probably feels more confident with me on the other side. However, he also seems to be easier to bend towards the right than to the left. So I'm going to start here to the right and see if I can make him cross over. Maybe move a little bit here away from my whip. First, making sure that he's not scared of it. Stroking him gently here. Touching him then at the side. Using a voice signal as well. And just see gently that he might step here. I might move to a position you can see that better then. Oh. So now this is better. Stroke him again with the whip. Make sure... She... Oh, Agnes a bit is in the way, isn't she? <laughs> I might lead him a little bit here. Away. There again. And ho. Oh. So now I'm standing here close to his head, keeping him next to me and using little touches with my fingers. But make him cross gently there over. There we go. And then that's enough. Then I'll go to the other side a little bit as well. I was just moving quarters. Do the same here. I can also do this. I put in the, the reins over his head like that, holding it close to his cheek, basically, just below the ears, crossing it there in my palm. Same thing here. Turn and make him cross a little bit over. That's fine. And just the reward is when I basically just take away all the pressure. I leave him alone. So that's why he also understands then that, okay, that might be what she is after. Now he seems to be doing this quite well. So I'm going to try another step, which is maybe a little bit big jump, but we'll see how it goes. I stand here behind the saddle or around the saddle's position, crossing the reins in my hand, having a little contact on the outside rein as well as inside rein and going forward. And if he doesn't respond here, again, he doesn't seem to be the one that responds very quickly. I might need to improve, increase a little bit the pressure there, but I definitely don't want to be to have to hit him or anything like that. He's just trying to figure this out, give him a little time to think about it. Might need a little push on the outside rein just to get him going and walk. There you go. Good boy. Come. That's it. Good boy. There you go. And now as I'm in this position, I actually have quite a good view of both his mouth, his eyes, his ears, his neck, shoulders. Good boy. And ho. Oh. So I can take a little bit of a time to figure out how he is reacting, what his responses are. Seems a little confused. I'm not so sure if he has ever done this before. And walk. So we'll just try this one more time on this side. Come. And walk. And again, hesitant here a bit. Come. There you go. So the goal is always to have the horses respond to a minimum small little cue. 
If they don't, you might need to bring a little bit more force into it. And again, however, normally there is no need to do, to go overboard there. Often they just need a little time to figure this out, to think it through. Very good, there you go. Now it starts to move a little bit more. And then again with the body language, as well as the voice, and maybe even the whip to the front to say, ho. Oh. Excellent, good boy. And when I stand still and do nothing, I always like to believe that that's when we press save. That's when the computer program gets actually saved. That's when the horse thinks, that's when he understands. So he needs a little time maybe to think this through. And then we can go to the other side as well. I just want to try one more thing here to see a little bit about his shoulders and walk. He seemed to be offering me, there you go, offering me the shoulder there before. Come. In order to get hold of his inside shoulder, I need to bend him a little bit to the inside. Maybe go a bit here. And maybe tickle him a little bit there, there, almost. Bend a little bit again. And there, good boy. And again, as soon as one step in the direction of where I wanted to go, I leave him be, have him think it through a little bit. And then we do the same on the other side. Thank you so much. And I would say that this is maybe a nice start just to get to know the horse a tiny bit. And uh, before you maybe sit on it, just to see how they react, that they get to know you. And you kind of get a little bit of an idea of what they might know. So my idea here is that he is well used to the bridle. He is quite confident. He's not very easily scared. He's not skittish. He's quite, you know, has good self-esteem, I would say. He is, however, a little bit maybe stuck in his sides. He might simply not know very much about going sideways. I don't think he has maybe had an awful lot of, of work at the hand either, but we'll see. Maybe I'll try to record a bit when we start the ride.